I want to talk today about a subject, and I want to get straight to that subject immediately. Thank you, Pam Norris, for being up at zero dark 30. That's what we call it in the military. Zero dark 30 is what we call it in the military. And I want to, I want to share my screen real quick because my title is going to come from NPR itself. My title, okay, Grace says she calls it Jesus a clock because she was Baptist. My title comes from NPR itself. The title is a bit inflammatory. I didn't make it up, but I'm going to take it because they're right. And it's something I've been saying, but we need to break it down. We need to break it down greatly. I believe that by the time you're finished with this class, you're going to have a better understanding of what you should be doing, why you should be doing it, how you should be doing it, and like just stop. Just just stop. Okay? That's that's it's my agenda here that I hope that I can get across to you. My agenda. But we'll get there when we get there. So let me first share my screen and tell you where I am drawing my file from. NPR. Shout out to NPR. They've been doing an absolutely fantastic job here lately of reporting things in the middle of all these things. This is the article from yesterday. So if you're watching this recording later, this is April 14th. Is that, am I right? This is April 14th, guys? Yes. This is April 14th. April 14th. Yesterday, NPR headline read from private helicopters to concierge, doc, concierge doctors. And this is what I want to talk about. Inequality is a big business. And that's today's class. Inequality is a big business. That's what I want to talk about today. Inequality is a big business. And what we're going to do is I'm going to post this in the chat for you. And I want to do my very best to comprehensively allow you all to, okay, I'm going to do my very best to comprehensively allow you all to receive, so to speak, that inequality is a big business. Let's say a few things here. There's a link to that if you want it. Literally, I could run back over a hundred hours of clips and say, I told you so. I can literally split screen, say something I said last year and the year before over and over and over and say, all right, ladies and gentlemen, when I said that, did you apply today? No. I can literally do that, and I probably will. I probably will. Inequality is a big business. And we're drawing that, not from my words, not from my arrogance or whatever it may have you, we're going to make it super simple and we're going to allow you to see that NPR itself, and we're going to break down this article and I got way much more for this. This is why I'm hijacking the class today because there's a problem that we all need to address together. From private helicopters to concierge, concierge doctors, inequality is a big business written yesterday. I just sent it to you in the chat should you want it. COVID-19 attacks indiscriminately, that's facts. Young or old, rich or poor, it seems like everyone is vulnerable to the virus. That is facts. Doesn't matter, just facts. Facts, 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 facts. It just doesn't matter. Anybody can get it from the prime minister of the UK to a homeless person on a bridge in America, anybody can get it. It's just what it is. I want to read this. I want you to read this. One of the most striking aspects of the, of the emergency of the coronavirus is the inability to get tested. Now, we're going to, well, this is coming from, well, we'll come back to that for, for in a second. New York Times economic writer Nelson Schwartz is talking right here. And he says, increasing economic inequality in the U.S. means that as a group, 
the country's wealthiest 1% are likely to fare better during a pandemic than everyone else. Let me just, let me just, let me just, if, if I can get you, I, I, I told Grace yesterday, I'm hijacking the class. I want you, Maurice, I'm gonna have some input in you from about, in about 30 minutes from now. I want all of you to receive this. This is not fair. How many times have you heard me tell you business is not fair? He who spends the most money for a customer wins. Business is not fair. This is not fair. And it's set up. If you go into the freshman level, there is a class called the rich gets, why the rich gets richer. I then break down why this is happening. I did it years ago and it, Literally, the whole thing is Nostradamus-like. It's happening now. It's by design. I'm not here to argue COVID-19 is by design. I'm saying that the way capitalism is structured, this is by design. Right now, everyone should be recognizing that billionaires are applying for the same loans as you because the only way to get wealthy is to have wealth. It's the only thing that creates wealth is wealth. And the only way to create that wealth is labor. It's, it's you know how you, when you're trying to apply for a job, they say, well, do you have any job experience? And you go, no. And they go, well, I can't hire you. I have any job experience. And you're like, well, if you would hire me, I would have job experience. Huh? No one, no one's going to hire me because no one, you, you get it? You, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to get the job experience, but no one's going to hire me because I don't have a job, job experience. Or you tell homeless people to get off the streets. And then how do homeless people get off the streets? You say, well, go, go to a shelter. Go get some assistance. And then first thing they do is they say, okay, let me see your ID. And the homeless person says, I don't have an ID. And the person that's supposed to, the program that's supposed to help says, well, I can't give you any assistance. You don't have an ID. The system is set up that way. Capitalism is not fair to the middle class. The only, uh, Grace has put this in the chat. This is the most important lesson that I have taught you so far. And as true to my teaching style, I will slow up for the first 15 minutes because I know that cognitive dissonance is real, and I would do my cognitive behavioral therapy thing and attempt to plant a seed to destroy your social construct so we can all walk together. I am doing that, and I got about six minutes left in it. These are not my words. What I'm doing, every time I share my screen, I'm telling you the tactical thing that I'm doing. Every time I share my screen, I am taking your opinion out of me and putting it onto someone you cannot get cognitive dissonance with, NPR. Inequality is big business. This is today's subject. I am literally taking it from them. But I've been telling you that inequality is big business. All right? Now, I don't expect for everyone to pay attention. It's just not going to happen. And I'm okay with that. But it's not going to stop the fact that tomorrow, today, you're going to be exploited. Wealth is the only way to create wealth, and labor is the only way to get that wealth. So I want to break down some things in this article that you need to receive and maybe we can get somewhere with it. The top 1%, or how do they say it? The, wealth, the country's wealthiest 1% are likely to fare better during the pandemic than everybody else. It's the truth. It's the truth. I wrote an entire book on it called The Richest Man in the Trash King. Okay? It is the truth. I wrote an entire book on it called The Richest Man in the Trash Can. 
All of you need to find your way into the top 1% as fast as possible so you can change the crooked way that we're doing things. But you can't change it from the middle. It's just not going to happen. Now, we're going to scroll down a little bit. I think the result is less sympathy, less empathy, and sort of hard edge societies. There's a lot of anger among people who are not benefiting from those kind of privileges. There isn't a feeling that we're in it together. Instead, it's each man for himself. Facts. I don't even have to go backwards to the antecedent so you can see what this is talking about. Just facts. Now, there's an interview. You got concierge doctors. You have all sorts of stuff. It just, it just all sorts of stuff. And everything in this article, I sent it to you, is pointing to something. It's all pointing to something, and we're going to see what it's pointing to. Now, before we get to what it's pointing to, let me show you what is happening. This is not fair. Do you understand? Nothing I'm about to say is fair. It's not intended to be fair. It just is. I didn't make this up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen again. And here we have it. Blank Google screen, TMZ. And then I'm gonna type in, no, 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 we're gonna type in XFL files bankruptcy. Boom. ESPN. ESPN reports that the XFL has filed for bankruptcy. There is a they owe, well, the filing officially made by Alpha Entertainment listed the XFL with assets and liabilities each range from 10 million to 50 million, the largest creditor was listed at St. Louis Sports Commission at 1.6 million. They owe, well, they filed for bankruptcy. Let's, let's just come back to that for a second. XFL owes University of Houston 300,000. Now, this ain't y'all job to know this stuff, but that's why I'm here. 24-7 Sports reports that the XFL owes University of Houston nearly $300,000. Everybody got me so far? We just proved, we just proved the thing. We proved that you can have a million or a billion dollar business, and if it's not cash flowing, you're in trouble. Can I get some head nods on that? And cash flow should not, yes, 10% in chat, that is trash. I'm about to do something even worse than that, Ted, is next. I'm setting, I'm literally throwing myself an alley -oop. You need everybody cash flow now no problem we get that not a problem at all that's easy what should have been exposed to you all in the coronavirus pandemic is that these businesses don't have cash flow they have a workforce and you have been the cash flow for them in the form of robbing peter to pay paul anybody ever heard that before Rob people to PayPal. That's how they've been using you. Every your current, if you're at work right now, your labor is being used to rob Peter to pay Paul. You know why? Because your business is being drastically affected right now. And IT is next. I'm telling you, next. Why? And tell me how you know IT is next. Because IT, in its very definition, is support business. 
and IT does a practice that is wrong, but it's common. You know what IT does? They give you the infrastructure for cheap and charge you monthly astronomical prices to maintain it and have add-ons. While that is a fantastic business model, if everyone would hear me, that business model was invented in surplus. That model's not going to work in an economic correction. Why? Because if Pam Norris realizes that she is being charged astronomically for something that doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily need and now she's losing her customers. She's going to get rid of something she doesn't necessarily need. And IT will be one of the first. I want to recap real quick because I want you to see something. I want you to see that I proved I ain't even got a point to prove. I'm just typing. I proved that the XFL, this, this, like, y'all, these, the, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just say it candidly, you know, this we y'all trying to be. Can you see my screen, Grace? Does it say XFL on it? This what yeah. y'all trying to be. Okay, this is what y'all trying to be. Y'all trying to be this. Maybe not XFL, maybe not Vince McMahon, but this is what you're trying to be. You're trying to be million-dollar companies. And you're doing the million-dollar company this their way. But they have – let me – I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second because let me tell you I was real. They not good business men and women. They're not good businessmen and women. Oh, the people around the world are not good businessmen and women. Just like prohibition of alcohol, they profit in ways of exploitation. And then once the economic disruption occurs, they need bailouts or they file Chapter 11. You know what bankruptcy means? Let me tell you what bankruptcy means in plain English. Bankruptcy means government tell them I'm no longer allowed, I, I can no longer pay them. And you legally now have to tell them to stop bothering me. They're not getting their money. If, you, if you're wondering what bankruptcy means, now you can go look up, you can go look up the real definition if you want to, but I'm telling you what it means. It means I have declared legally with filings that I am unable to pay. And, yeah, they ain't get any money. Now, you go tell them they can't legally get money from me because I ain't got it and they can't get it. Now, we look down on that when the middle class does it. Creditors give you a low credit rating when you do that. But businesses get protected. That's BS. Don't start a business if you can't pay your bills. What? Right? Don't start a business if you can't pay your bills. Inappropriate. If you're not going to pay your bills, don't start a business. Ain't that what they taught you, Pam Norris? If you're going to get this credit card, it's appropriate that you pay it. Yeah, that's what they tell you all day long. But the same credit card company can file Chapter 11. <laughs> all right? I'm going to show it to you again. I'm, I'm, I'm finished. Tipper said that's trash in the notes. I'm so glad she's here. And I'm so glad she said that. I'm so, I'm so glad she said that. So here we go. Show to you again. They owe somewhere between 10 and 50. They said, yo, <laughs> look here, uh, uh, Adalia. <laughs> I know we got a written contract and all. 
You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I ain't on that. That's what they said. That's what. That's what that means. That's what that means. That means I know we in the contract, but ain't nothing you can do about it because I I legally filed for bankruptcy. Oh well. That's what that means. Is it crooked? No. It's legal. It's legal. It's legal. It's what it is. It's what it is. Now, did they try to work out deals? I don't know that. I don't have enough evidence to know if they try to work out deals. I don't know. Then I showed you that they owe the University of Houston nearly $300,000. Y'all, I'll be on it. Pam, I'll be on it. Listen, let me tell you. Let me tell you why. I be I be on it, cause I be like every time I hear something, I don't never believe what I hear. When I go, they laying off. I go, huh? I wonder why they laying off. Let me go find out, and I go look at every article I can find. Chapter eleven. And I'm saying, all right, let me go see who they owe. Mm-hmm. I should be I should have been an investigative journalist or something. I be on it. I'm always trying to pick why because I understand. History is not linear. It does repeat itself. It does repeat itself. Now, Antonio, why are you bringing this up? You know what? I'm glad y'all asked. Would you like this? I'm going to stop my screen for dramatic effect. Let me tell you why I'm bringing this up. This is insane. The name of this class is Inequality is Big Business. Now, I just showed you how it ain't fair, but now I just took the answer. I want y'all to watch this. This is insane. Can someone unmute your mic and read this for me, please? The date's right here. That's yesterday. Anybody. I'm going to kick back. Start right here. WWE named essential business by Florida governor. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, Cletus. Come on, Cletus. All right, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna rewind the whole class. Hold on. We're going to rewind the whole class. All right, we're going to rewind the whole class. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. We're going to rewind the whole class. I will show you the setup I did. I told everybody that I was going to take a few minutes to set this up. I'm going to show you the setup I did. I said, Grace, um, hijacking your class. Run me that, okay? And this, this, we got something we got to talk about. Because I got a responsibility. I have a responsibility. Y'all, I'm grateful that you all have followed me. But I got a responsibility to tell you what they're not telling me. I just have that responsibility. So I set this class up by saying, I want to make an inflammatory statement, but I didn't make it. NPR did. And then I went to the date. That's yesterday. And I highlighted inequality is big business. And I slowed down. And I watched. I knew. I knew someone was going. I knew. I saw a few names on the screen. I knew for sure. I knew for sure, Maurice, one of those people was going to hang up. I knew for sure because they do it all the time. I knew for sure. I knew it. They do it every single time because they can't fathom. Like Y'all listen to me. They can't handle in their head that I am me and they're forced to follow me. They can't handle that. Now listen, it ain't going to stop the fact that I look like this or I'm young or whatever you want to say. What's objective is inequality is a big business. Period, point blank. And I went down here on purpose to highlight the statement that the country is wealthiest 1%. It's probably going to do better during the pandemic than everyone else. Punchline 
So we'll go to the end of the story. How did I prove your statement? The WWE is named an essential business in Florida. Everything in between was just a setup for me to say this. Here's the thesis. You got to remember, I have a master's. You have to remember, I have a master's degree. I am very good at writing papers. My whole degree is only papers. Every class I'm giving you my, here's my thesis. My title is inequality is a big business. My thesis, the argument that I am proving throughout this class is the country is wealthiest 1% are likely to fare better during the pandemic than everyone else. And right after that, I said, because I knew somebody, I knew who it was, happens every time, happens every time. I literally went for the opposing viewpoints. And the first thing I did, Maurice, is I said, listen, this ain't me talking. I knew I had to say that. I knew I did. I knew I did. Cognitive dissonance. I even went to explain how I know the cognitive dissonance is this, but please now I'm going to do my cognitive behavioral therapy thing. I'm going to introduce some to your social constructs and tear them down. And then I got about six more minutes left in that. That is exactly what I said. Then I even went and said, next, Maurice, I'm coming to you in a second. About 30 minutes in, I'm at 929 right now. I started at 903. I am that strategic. <laughs> I just saw Tim is lying out. Right? I'm that strategic. You understand? I knew this was going to happen. Say the thesis again. This is insane, Pam. In fact, Pam Norris, I saw your reaction. I saw you shake your head. The country is worth is 1% are likely to fare better during the pandemic. And then, boom, the same dang on owner that did this. No, not that one. That's coming. That's you, Maurice. The same owner that I need, need to pull it back up. I need to pull it back up. XFL. This it, right? The same, same owner, right? That owes 300000 You know what they would do to you if you owe $300,000 to a college? Yeah, it, it, off with your head. You'd be in jail. You, come on now. How many of you can literally walk around comfortably? Denise Hill did a business deal with 97.9 The Box or something, 92.1 Praise, and now she owed them $300,000. You think she's going to be able to sleep at night? This is not fair. This is not fair to you middle class folk. You ain't listening. What we do is we tell you to do something and we go outside of that and oppress you with what we just told Justin to do. We do it all the time. I'm just the idiot that keep on going back and exposing what the hell we doing. All right. They going I need to hurry up and write a book that's going to protect me, Grace. So I'm not, so they gonna, <laughs> somebody ought to be saying, protect that man at all costs. <laughs> Because I keep on exposing it. And I am. I'm never going to stop. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop because separation is illusion. We are all connected. And the way I share the light is to create 100,000 millionaires, not because of the money. Because I believe that if I create 100,000 millionaires of Phil's and Susan's and Pam's to good people, they would raise the collective consciousness of this world. I'm just doing my light, my job as a light bearer. The same people. They owe this. Remember, I showed you the other one. They owe XFL files for bankruptcy. Remember, that's just University of Houston. They got bills for $1.6 million with somebody. Like, process this information. They owe the St. Louis. It's, it's here. Like This isn't even... It's hit. The largest creditor was listed 
as the St. Louis Sports Commission, $1.6 million. And then seven of the league's eight coaches are amongst the top creditors. So they coach. They said, listen, come coach, man, put some money in. We're going to make it, and we're going to make sure that you're going to be a coach. You're turned to, oh, right, all that stuff. They owe $300,000. Who takes $300,000 to us from a school? And then owe $1.6 million. And then turn around and use that same privilege to do this. How in the heck is wrestling an essential business and y'all can't be open? Irresponsible. That's grossly irresponsible. That is grossly ir- you, you understand? That, and and who, who that makes no sense. But it don't need to make sense. I don't need it to make sense. And you shouldn't care for it to make sense. You should do one thing. Don't get pissed off. Get into the top 1%. Write that in chat, Grace. Don't get pissed off. Get into the top 1%. It's the only way to change it. Because this ain't changing. This ain't going nowhere. Not the way it's currently set up. And you, I'm going to borrow from Abraham Hicks now. I'm going to borrow from Abraham Hicks. You can never be sick enough to help sick people. Y'all, if you want to help the middle class, you can't be middle class. And stop letting people convince you that middle class is where you should be. They are lying to you. Do you understand? They lying. They lying. They lying. Inequality is big business. I'm going to prove it. I already proved it, but I'm going to keep proving it. Yo, come on. The set Adalia. Adalia. Now Adalia, can you fool around and close one business and turn around oh fifty million in debt and then take your fifty million in debt oh and self and then tell the government, oh yeah, I ain't paying them back. Y'all do know that, right? Chapter 11, man, I'm not, not, not going to pay it back. I'm not going to do that. They're not going to consolidate. You ain't never seen a debt consolidator go after the top 1%. That go after the middle class because that too is a scam. Debt consolidation is a huge scam. You paying off your debt that's going to fall off in seven years in the first place. And when 35% of your credit score is also on time monthly payment. <laughs> this has got to be a funny private message. Online, I mean, your it's on time monthly payment. And if I tell you to pay your debt off, knowing it ain't gonna take your score, all it is is I'm a scavenger bill collector. That's all I am. I'm taking commission off the money you don't have. If you had it, you wouldn't have filed for bankruptcy. Debt consolidation is going after you, not Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon is not on the phone with no debt consolidators. That man, Antonio, how do you know? Oh, I'm glad you asked me how I know he ain't on the phone with no debt consolidators. Allow me to share my screen again. 
Boom. Right here, it says 413, as in April 13th, named essential business. Right here, it says that they filed for chapter 11 with 413. Let's doggone day that. The same, yeah, the same day they filed for chapter 11 is the same day my man got on the phone and said, make me essential business. You know how genius that is? I can't even say that negative about that. That's genius. Of, that's genius inequality. <laughs> yeah. This, <laughs> I can't do nothing but laugh. Because that's the system you're up against. If you don't get your butt out of the middle class as fast as possible, create you some monthly subscription, listen to what I've been saying, you're not going to be able to benefit. That's inappropriate. It's so inappropriate, I damn near might not even watch WWE no more. I mean, real talk. I'm just, just telling you. That's just me, though. You do you. I've got no problem. I have no problem with Vince McMahon and company making his money. I'm going to be very clear. I got no problem with being him being named an essential business in Florida. I got no problem with that. You know what I take issue with? He didn't teach y'all. Is my mic still on? This man get all the money he wants. This man can be as essential as he want to be. But there's a lot of businesses in Florida. Grocery stores, mom and pops, podcasters that can't do business. Now, if you're going to do that, then what you should have did was create some sort of law. Something. You should have, you should have used your clout with the governor to say, yo, help out other people too. That's what I got issue with. I don't care nothing about this man's abundance. This man, I ain't gonna never, if, if I meet him, I don't give a damn because I ain't gonna be starstruck and I got money. I don't care nothing about this man's abundance. I'm glad he got it. I hope he helps as many people as he can get with it. But what we're not gonna do is act like equality, inequality is not a big business. It is. It is. I could be exploiting y'all should I have that motive. I do not. Inappropriate. I'll show you. I sent this to, I sent this to, it was the other day. We were talking about a personal conversation and it was just amazing. Maurice, this where you come in at. I promised 30 minutes. I took 36. This is where you come in at. Y'all, welcome. Welcome. Again, April 13th, Chase now requires a 700 FICO score and 20% down payment to buy a home. Okay. Okay. I just want, we ain't got to read the rest of this article. We ain't got to read this. Just, let me just, let's just, I'm going to type in something real quick. But actually, let me, let me copy and paste it. Let me send this to you. I'll put this in chat for you too. And then I'll, I'll put all these links in. Let me, let me put these links in there too. I'm going to put this in chat for you. I want everybody to have access. So I want you to say, you know, well, that's sad. You got it right here. I ain't making any of these up. All these are trusted sources. May not like TMZ no much, that much, but they stuff be facts. Now, housing wire. I've come during this pandemic. I've 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 come I've come to like housing wire a lot. I have I have my reasons. They've been putting out some really good information. Check this out, y'all. Chase now requires 700 FICO score, 20% down. I'm going to bring this up in a second. We're coming back to this. We'll start a new window. Did 
Chase receives a bailout. Let's find out. Let's see what this one. Let's see what this one says. JP Morgan Chase, CEO, bank took TARP because we were asked to by Treasury Secretary. Interesting. It's 2012. Anybody familiar with 2012? That's me. That's me. Government bailout. Yeah, okay. Cool. Cool. So they took bailout money, including $25 billion, and untold billions directly through bailout. Okay. Okay. Cool, cool. Did Chase pay back bailout money? Let's let's find out. Wednesday is the first day banks are eligible to begin repaying the money. J.P. Morgan said it repaid twenty five billion to TARP, while Goldman Sachs repaid ten billion. So they know what it's like to borrow, and they know what it's like to pay back. Okay, okay. So Antonio. Why are you bringing this up? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because if they know times are tough, and if they've been through it and received government bailout money, why are they making it harder for you? Did I just make sense? Was that? I got this bad habit of making sense. It's it's a bad habit. It's It's a real bad habit I got. Does that make some sense then? If you know, if you took bailout money, you now you're making it harder? Who's supposed to have a 700? Tell me who's going to have a 700 credit score in the next 30 days. Only one type of person. It will not be regular people. <laughs> Nail on the head, Tippy. Can't be even with y'all. This whole thing is not about equality. Equality says that I must manufacture that. Equality says that you got to be on the same level as me. I get it. Am I telling you be equal? No. I'm actually telling you get your butt in the top one percent. Equality is a myth. It doesn't exist. You have to make equality. Equality does not naturally exist. There's no same raindrop, no same water snowflake, no same fingernail, no same fingerprint. You must make equality. That means those who have more must carry the infirmities of the weak. Somewhere a book said that. You ever heard that? I say it in a way you're familiar with it, Grace. The strong must bear the infirmities of the weak. That sound familiar now? Okay, that sound familiar. The King James version. There you go. I know you like to quote King James. You understand? And it's, it's, seriously, you must create equality. But I thought it was a myth. You have to you create it. And I want to create a hundred thousand million man, so y'all can go out there and go create equality. This is insane, y'all. It's insane that a company that owes fifty million dollars to people to bit do you understand that if some of these companies don't get their fifty million dollars or well that ain't fifty million dollars? Is it possible if Every company got all their invoices paid, then no one would have to be laid off. That's exactly what would happen. So you're going to help the pandemic layoffs. You're helping unemployment and then go run and become an essential business in your main business. I got no respect for that. And I don't need to. And you can't make me. I don't need to have respect for that. 
new normal. Maurice, in 2008, now, in, I'm, I'm going to say this because you're not allowed to. Okay, I'm going to say this because you're not allowed to. The housing market, the bankers and the insurance companies and the realtors and the brokers caused the Great Recession. Okay, he's not allowed to say that. He's a broker. We know this. <laughs> we know this. This is facts. Adjustable arm, we call them arm, adjustable rate mortgages, giving people loans they should, that couldn't afford it, giving them to what they can afford, and three years later, it popped up way up here. Yeah, you can't Predatory do that. lending. Predatory lending. You get it? So he can't say that, but I can. Now, this is what you can say. Maurice, in 2008 and beyond, has lending for houses gone back to 2007 and before? Not at all. Give us some examples. Well, um, where um, one of the examples is with mortgage insurance, um, one example is with um, student loans. Now, it was a time when your student loans weren't even considered, wasn't even being considered um, when you had to uh, qualify for, when you, were, when, you, when you were attempted to qualify for a mortgage. The student loans wasn't being considered. Now, the student loans is being considered. Um, so it's definitely becoming much, much harder to um, uh, get, a, get a mortgage. Um, uh, one of the things that I just found out yesterday, at, you used to be able to apply if you purchased in a multifamily, you used to be able to use 75% of that as your income. So let's say you go and buy a three-family house. You, you qualify, you make $80,000 a year. You're going to live in one of those units. The other two units, the total income for those two units that you, that you would generate would be added to your 80000 so that will make you qualify for more. Now, as of probably a month ago, that no longer um, is an option. So those, mm -hmm. you know, those type of things for people that would need that and that could use and benefit from, from that, that's barely getting into a home and barely able to squeeze into a home, that's yeah. tightening up, getting to a point where you're I mean, Why would you change laws against counting my cash flow? It's my cash flow. Why would you do that? Mm -hmm. That's mine. Right? Why would you do that? It hasn't. It hasn't gone back. Right? It just. It hasn't gone back. Nope. It, and it's been has credit has the way credit worked because they changed it in two thousand eight. Has it Absolutely. gone back to normal? I'm gonna tell you one. Do one better. There is a FICO score system out there that's new. They stick to the old FICO model. It's been, if you can research it, and I really wish I had the data, I'm going to research it so that I could show you, but it's, there's a new FICO score model that makes it easier and make, okay, so it's legal, certain things are legal to qualify to help you to get into a home um, easier, you know, for those that may not be able to just have uh, honest working, been on the job for two years, pay their rent, no flaws, good enough credit a track record, history of paying, and you know that they'll pay their mortgage because they pay their rent. So, you know, if history is best serves, best rewards research, you know, you, they know, you know that they're going to pay because they pay their rent. And, but just don't have the down payment money. So there's programs that would allow for your credit, your rental history to go towards it. However, that scoring model is not being used. There's a scoring model that's, uh, it, so it's a, the, they stick to the old FICO scoring model for whatever reason, for, well, for the reason that we're talking about, <laughs> that FICO model is instead of um, changing to a newer updated FICO model that will make it easier and more um, amicable for individuals to get into homes that may or may not be able to get into it. And that's facts. Um, there's a score model and it's a, a, a new score, credit scoring model out there. And there's, there's tons of them. That's why when you see um, your FICO score, FICO is the name of Fair Isaac, you know, so, and that's the name of it. So a lot of people think the FICO score is, is it, but 
FICO is just the name of the company. Um, it's a scoring model. But there's tons of different ones out there. So you that's why you'll see free credit karma might be a 682, and you might get another one that might be 670. So there's tons of different models out there, and it didn't used to be that way. And I'm not sure how much of that was on purpose or, you know, as related because of that, that model. So there's a lot going on that, you know, is um, that ties into what you're saying that makes sense as to that, that ties straight to that, those facts that it's, you know, well, well I'm, I'm glad, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that because there's some hidden stuff going on here too, that I'm going to throw out there in the 1980s. I don't know if y'all remember this. I don't remember it because I was born to 81 when I was six and seven years old when it got really bad, but I know it because I'm a businessman. Banks were going out of business left and right. Thousands of them at a time. The government had to step in. So what you see, the banks that are left today are pretty much mergers and acquisitions of all those banks that went belly up in the 80s. That actually happened. That's one of the hidden factors behind here. So who is Chase protecting, themselves or the consumers? Because you are unlendable, and they're making sure you remain that way now. So they, they, they tighten the standards. You understand? That's number one. <laughs> Number two, who in the heck is going to have a 700 credit score after 17.3 million people, no, 16.8 million people got laid off in one country in 21 days? All it takes is one late payment to drop below a 700. Oh, there will be, there will most certainly be credit scores past 700. Anyone want to care to guess who's going to have them? Hmm. All right. Yep. Everyone's saying it. I see your mouths moving, right? We all know. The wealthy. Your Sunday school teacher is probably not going to be able to maintain or 700, or maybe essential workers. They'll still be able to pay their bills. Nurses, police officers. But then they're going to be debt slaves anyway, if not already. It's, it, this is incredible. Maurice, I'm going to set you up again. I'm going to throw you alley you. This is... <sighs> I just, I, I laugh, or maybe scoff at this, I suppose, because this is happening right before our eyes, and it always happens. It always this this is a way of life for the middle class. It just is. Seven hundred twenty percent down, and twenty percent twenty percent down, son. That ain't happened since the forties, right? I mean, come on, twenty <laughs> percent. That's a a hundred thousand dollar house is twenty thousand dollars down. You understand? Plus closing costs. Who, who who who? Which one of y'all just got twenty percent of a two hundred twenty five thousand dollar house? Grace, what's that? If if a hundred thousand is two, that's forty. That's forty thousand. That's forty five thousand dollars. Who got the average median house in Texas? It's in Texas or Houston, excuse me. It's two hundred twenty-five thousand. Now we ain't even talked about Adonia out there in the Bay Area with the gazillion-dollar houses. I shudder to think how Adonia would lose her mind if she had to go <laughs> buy a house today. And I, you know what? If she cut on her camera, y'all, she'd be like, y'all, 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 let, y'all let me know. Because I got other screens up, so y'all let me know. Because I showed up. She, my girl dodged a bullet. She dodged a bullet 
when we discussed something, said something was gonna happen, they food around and happened. And now she's not affected by it happening. And I'm, I'm glad for that. Ain't nobody got no 40 something thousand dollars lying around. And if you did, you trying to invest it somewhere, ain't you? Y'all, to give you an idea of $40,000, a school teacher will work for 30 years and retire with $80,000 in her 401k. We're now asking people to put half of their life savings, not not the way you use life savings as in the phrase. No, I mean your whole working life, you would have saved 80,000 and now we're asking you to put 45,000 of that up for a house because the world is hurting. That is big business. Here's the other hidden thing behind that. Chase is still going to keep, until until Fed rates go into the negative, Chase and every bank is still going to accrue interest inside the Federal Reserve. I'm going to share the screen again. I want all of y'all to listen to me when I say this hidden thing behind it. These folks know that they fit to give way less loans. You know what they said, Pam Norris? They said, I'm betting on the Federal Reserve and not the people. The current Fed, the, we just, you know what? Let's find out together. What is the current, uh, what is it called? Federal interest rate. Right now, it's at 0.25. That's almost negative. One month ago, it was at 1.75. This is almost negative. We can't. It's hard to get lower than that. This is the lowest it's ever been. This is, this, y'all, this is real. 0.25. That's, that means for every dollar, they're going to make 25 cents. All right? Now, this is, and anywho, let me not. Let me not throw y'all off too much. Now, I want you to pay attention to something. Everybody look at this screen. Chase now requires 700 FICO score, 20 down, percent down. They know that they're going to make less money because how many of y'all wish I could buy a house at 0.25? You know, you you wish. You, You wish. You wish your, you know, come on. Come on now. You wish. No. What they just said is, we know we losing money. <clears throat> let, me, let, me, let me put this back. No one wants to lose. This is, Grace, how many times does 0.25 go into 1.75? How many times? I believe it's seven. Double check me. <clears throat> I'm doing it in my head seven. Uh, you got your mic muted, your, your phone muted. <clears throat> My head yes. is telling me it's seven. Yes, seven quarters make a dollar seventy-five. All right, then. Grace, you, you, hold on. You, you're the mathematician. You taught math for how, how many years? Eleven. Eleven. Okay. What grade did you teach math? The very first year it was fifth through eighth, but then after God that it was just child. fifth and sixth grade. <laughs> I was God at a charter school. <laughs> God bless you, child. God bless you. All right. Whatever age you would have said, I was going to say God bless you, but God bless you anyway. Fifth or eight. I, I know how I act in all of them grades. Now, is it safe to say, Grace, that decimals and fractions is something that you had to teach? Yes, Lord. At what grade level is fractions first taught? Ooh. 
now. It's on average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe it's like third or fourth grade. Third or fourth grade. That makes sense. At what grade do we introduce decimals? There's a, you know, we got integers, that's whole numbers. What grade do we introduce decimals? About fifth grade. About fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So we do fractions first, and then we tell them, look, y'all been doing fractions. You've been doing decimals, you just call them fractions, right? Is that fair to say? Well, that's sixth grade when you convert fractions to decimals. Okay, okay, cool. Boom. Uh, all of us past the sixth grade, though, that are listening to you? It's, it's, yes. we're, we're, we're adults. Okay, we got, we're, we're pat, we, we, we stop growing up and we start growing wide in our stomachs. I understand. I understand. <laughs> I understand. You know, we stop getting taller. We got, we got, we got horizontal. I understand. Now, percentages simply means multiply by 100. Is that fair? That's, yeah. that's basically what percentage means. It's I'm not a mathematician like you, well, at least not that kind. Yes. But I Perfect. remember. It's out of 100. Mm-hmm. Out of 100. There you go. All right. Mm-hmm. Out of 100. We introduced out of 100 pretty early in grade school. When will we introduce that? Grade? <laughs> uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well. I guess the thing, can, can you do fractions without out of 100? Can you even do that? No. No, it's impossible. Right. Because fraction means, like, you, you, you're doing mm-hmm. it out of a whole number. Right. Which is 100. Right. Outstanding. And that's third grade, you said? Yes. All right. Is it, help me if I'm right, to go from 1.75, to 0.25, that is a 700% decrease. Is this correct? Yes. Yes. 700% decrease. Is this correct? Yes. If I go to Pluto, is that math still going to work the same? (laughs) Yes. Okay. I want everybody to pay attention. I'm going to show you something. Do not not pay attention. Double negative. (laughs) Chase, the only way, I want you to pay attention to me. Look at my fat face. Pay attention to me, y'all. Pay attention to me. This is a setup. Pay attention to me. The only way to get out of the economic disruption is to sell less of your products. Doesn't make no sense, right? It just felt wrong. I said it with confidence, too. No, the only way to get out of an economic disruption is to sell more of your products. Everyone agrees with that, yes? Okay, let, let, let's take it out of economic disruption. If you need more money and you got some products in a garage, if you can sell all 100% of your products at full price value, would that take care of you? By show of hands, if if if, if you go ahead, show me your hands. I'm, I'm gonna show you something. Just, just so show me your hands. If you if you if you could sell, if you're a realtor and you could sell more houses, wouldn't that teach you out the situation? If you could sell more ice buddy coolers, wouldn't that wouldn't that bless you? Okay. If you can if you can sell more coaching packages. So the way not to file bankruptcy, the way not to go get a loan is to sell more of what you got. Is this fair? I'm going to share my screen now, and I want y'all to see Chase said, nah, we ain't doing that. Look at that. Look at that. When you raise it up to 700 FICO score and 20% down, you're doing the exact opposite. You're not, they're not selling more of their loans. You know what they're doing? I'm going to go back to bankrate.com. They said, we'll rather, I need y'all to hear this. We would rather hold our money in the Federal Reserve at a 700% discount loss from a month ago because we don't trust y'all. No, son. Hold on. Hold on. Every, okay. All right. 
if you have the ability to touch your camera on, you don't have to, but if you have the ability to do so, just for a second, if you can't, just lean in, don't multitask, just for 30 seconds. Don't scroll on Facebook. Don't cook the beans. Just give me 30 seconds, okay, starting now. They are not banking on you. They are banking on the government to multiply their money. And they're willing to do it at a 700% loss. How many of you have ever gotten to a deal knowing you're going to lose 700% of your money in 30 days? One month ago, the people that are in bed with the government, thanks, are now telling you, We'll take 700% less money before we give it to you. You can cut your cameras back off now. Y'all, that's 100% facts. I did not make that up. Inequality is one hell of a business. While y'all going down, they would rather take 700% loss with a central bank than to trust you with it. And you're letting people tell you everything's going to be all right tomorrow. The The banks can now hold their money at a higher rate than you, which is always the case. But you can't hold nothing. Y'all can't hold money. Y'all know, doggone well, you cannot hold money. You know why you can't hold money? I don't have so much discipline. You don't know when the country goes shut down, so you got to spend. Your refri- How, whose refrigerator got more food in it than normal because of what's going on? Come on. Who's planted more food in a garden since stuff is going on? You ain't worried about toilet paper since a hurricane was coming. Y'all ain't worried about no toilet paper. You, you're not even allowed to hold your money right now. Because for one, it don't make sense. But for two, you need supplies. The bank gets to hold their money. Do you understand that they are so counting against you they're willing to take a 700% loss? How many of you would have said this statement right here? I'm going to join ATS Business University because I could take a 700% loss. How many of you would have said that? Any hands? You know, I'm going to follow Antonio because I know that I'm guaranteed a 700% loss, but I'm going to be okay one day. Anybody want to say that? No? No? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. The system is, someone said in the chat, Michelle G said in the chat, the system is not and never has been set up for us to succeed. That's why I appreciate Antonio so much for these classes. It's not. The system is set up for three entities to succeed. Would you like to know what those entities are? Government, corporations, and those who own those corporations. Capitalism and communism is set up that way. Why y'all think y'all hate socialism so much? You think you hate socialism so much because it's bad or because we got billions of dollars of advertising and politics to tell you it is? Hmm. You think those are your thoughts? Is that what you think? You think everybody having a fair share? 
Am I for socialism? No, I'm, I'm just. I have a whole different economic model that I go by and have in my head, but it's different. Jacques. Anyway, I'll bring him up later. Y'all, this is big business. They're currently profiting off of your inequality. When the banks tell you, I'm going to take a 700% loss before I give you money, you in some crazy times. Phil, I think he was going to say something. Yeah. Um, Antonio, on your balance sheet, is a loan an asset or a liability? It's a liability. On your balance sheet, are your savings an asset or a liability? An asset. On a bank's balance sheet, it's the exact opposite. Yep. The loan on the bank's balance sheet is their assets. The deposits on their bank sets are their liabilities. So what the feds are banking on is that they're going to have a less demand on their loans, so their assets are going to be depleted, and they're going to have their liabilities because people are going to be taking their money out of the bank. So their loan-to-deposit ratio is going to be going down to – Nothing where before they could multiply themselves. You could give a bank a dollar and the government would let the bank make that pretend like it's ten dollars to go out there and loan it at the interest rates, and that's how they made money. So right now the banks are saying our deposits are there's gonna be a run on deposits eventually, if there hasn't been already. And we've got to make sure that we cover ourselves when we do this. So that's why we're willing to take our assets and place them with the Federal Reserve right now because we don't know any other safer place to put them. And Phil, would you say, according to your known experience, 68 and two thirds rotations around the earth, that every time that happens, it is a sign of a recession or an economic drop? Oh, no doubt. Yeah, that, no that's doubt. A that's what causes it. Y'all hear that? I'm going to tell you, we already here. But don't listen to me. Look at the time. At the very least, the demand, no, no, it's not a strong enough word. The responsibility for you to create your own economy is more greater now than it's ever been. You understand? Do you get it? So, Deanna, you make sure you had that meeting today. Phil and Susan. You understand? That's e that was economy talk I was talking. You feel me? All right. I want y'all to pay attention. The responsibility that you have now more than ever is greater to have your own economy than ever before. And it's not hard to do. And anybody can get it done. And everybody starts with no followers. If I could just, I don't know why that is the hardest lesson for me to teach. So what you don't have followers. Everyone starts there. Go. Because one is better than zero every day. Every day. I want you. Well, let me show you this here. Maurice, come hither. This is. Yeah, I'm so. I'm so, Phil, give me a good word for angered in a positive way. Anger in a positive way. I know. Yeah. Committed. Intense. There we go. There we go. I am so intensely committed. My name isn't even Webster. <laughs> but you got all the good stuff in your head. <laughs> I am so intensely committed 
to this conversation right now. I told Grace I'm hijacking your class. I want to show you something. I start doing all this yesterday evening. This, this is why I'm starting to like housing wire. Okay. April 10th. I'm, every time I show you an article, I show you the the time that article has been written, because a lot of the things that I talk about, not just things. Period. Some things are timeless. Like you can like, think of rich was Great Depression. That that could be. In fact, the older the better. The older that book gets, the better it gets. Some of these things you need a recent date, and a lot of the things that I have to do to walk you out of the middle class. We need to be talking about recent dates because the world is ever changing and the more recent, the better. It may be harder to get a mortgage after coronavirus crisis ends. Calabria says, okay. Now I always find articles because I'm going to come back to this one. Is it this one? No, nope, not that one. Oh, this one right here. I'm coming back to this. I, I brought this up in my meeting. Americans should brace itself for 18. I brought this up yesterday. We're coming back to that. But according to Federal Housing Finance Agency Director, This, this, Maurice, this is where you come in. <laughs> okay. According to Federal Housing Finance Agency Director Mark Calabria, some of those changes may be sticking around for a while. Anybody's housing price forecast right now should take should be taking with a grain of salt. Adonia, we sure did some smart, didn't we? Boy, we so did. <laughs> you you ought to shout <laughs> all over that place <laughs> right now. <laughs> boy, 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 it the show me a different story right now if it was. I might, I might, I might get you to talk. <laughs> Some of these changes we'll be thinking about around. Take it with a grain of salt, and that's no slight on forecasters. Now. Maurice, mm -hmm. the federal, you're a broker. You deal with handing out commissions and the securing of funds, hard money, traditional bank loans. This is directly affecting you in a way that none of us can fathom because you're the only broker in the room. Mm -hmm. The director says, I fear it may be harder to get a mortgage after this crisis ends. By all means, we've already proved credit didn't come back to the same. We already proved housing didn't come back the same. Now the director is saying there's new changes from Corona. And it's probably not going to come back. And I fear it's going to last a while. Would you free comment on, I, I, you give me two things, you can say whatever else you want. I want to know your personal fears as a broker, what you fear as a broker, because you still got employees to pay and bills to pay. And the lights ain't trying to hear that you are a devout Muslim, them light bills don't care. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, <really> don't. <laughs> you know? I pray three times a day. That's all right. Pay us your money, right? They, they, mm -hmm. they don't care nothing about your orthodoxy. They, they don't. They just do not mm -hmm. care about your devoutness. They want their money. I can assure you, Xfinity sent me a bill today. I got the email today. You understand? Mm -hmm. But you Antonio T. Smith Jr. Nah, 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 run me my money, Antonio. <laughs> nah. <laughs> you got it. Run me my money. I want to know your fears, and then what do you think about all this coming back to normal? 
Um, wow. I think um, my fears, uh, I don't know. I think the adjustment, um, you know, I fear for, you know, the outcome for those that don't know, have this opportunity here to, 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 to hear this, you know, and that, are, are and, and and not aware of, of really what's what's really going on and buying into it um i don't know i know it's an adjustment you know and it's going to take it will be re a recovery i don't know i don't know that, that it is a fear you know as much as um just adjusting man to what's what's going on and making yeah, adjustments. that's fair we would definitely you recover know? there's no doubt about it we will recover yeah. The recovery is just going to um, look different. Yeah. Um, I we do would know just that, have you know, back in the 80s. Uh, yeah, this, this was like in the 80s, though. This, it was hard to get a mortgage back in the 80s. The 80s, you mentioned, the interest rates. Yep. The difference was they were 20% interest rates. So the same thing, same scenario. You couldn't afford it because of the rate. You know, it was the same scenario, similar scenario. I wasn't doing business at that time, but those that weren't doing business when I got into business was all would always reference the eighties. Oh, you remember those interest rates when they were so high, you know, yep. it brought out creative finance and it brought out, that's where a lot of the creative financing came in. You now you go, now you're going to have to find other ways to make it work, you know, to do other things to make it work. So, yep. um, you have to come up with different ways and some of that other creative financing is going to have to come out, you know, to find different ways. You're going to find people doing holding paper, on properties now and different creative financing is going to come out. Um, so I don't even know, man. I, I, you know, the fear, I don't know. I have to think about that one. No, I can dig it. I can dig it. Yeah. I can dig it. As a broker, how are you going to respond? How are you going to respond oh, to? I already started responding. I'm sorry. Give me, yeah, give it to me. No, no. Give, give me some ways you're responding. Um, I'm adjusting, you know, um, for me doing more, uh, got little little Liddell grandson in the camera <laughs> over there. Unless unless Liddell pop one off and we don't know about it, we they probably started over. He crazy like you know, that. Be fruitful shifting, and multiply. Yeah, <laughs> shifting to more of what's going to be residual income. Um, yep. Shifting to shifting to guess what? Changing the changing my real estate scope to the, the digital real estate, which is the internet. So Good applying stuff. the same principles to real estate, the real estate on the and on the on the computer, on the internet, yeah. and adjusting that and do, using that, you know, and taking on the real estate, that real estate and finding the space in there, getting and taking on um, um, my share of influ my share of market space on on the digital um, real estate. Which you know, you internet. and Phil, you and Phil had a great conversation last night about downsizing office space. And feel oh, yeah. wisely recognized on the summit that the the trend of all those you know people were saying you know they're going to downside the office space. I missed it every time it was said. It wow. wasn't in my awareness because I already do that. Yeah. Well, it missed my you. awareness until until Phil said something. It missed my awareness. But remember, I started my business in the worst recession ever. I've been in business since 1996, failed multiple times. I started this business, I should say, in 2008, July 20th, 2008 to be exact. July 20th, 2008. Mm. I've always been on a minimalist model, always get made fun of for it. That's fine. Yeah. I'm not right. here. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm yeah. not I'm not here. I'm here chasing a hundred billion dollars. And mm -hmm. I don't buy stupid stuff. I just don't buy stupid stuff. I find no need for it. The stupidest thing that I buy is wine and vodka. I like those two things. <laughs> Other than that, that I ain't sucks. buying nothing crazy. And if I can figure out how to grow some grapes and, and ferment my own 
wine, I would. You understand? It's crazy though, right? Mm -hmm. This is a adjustment. What would you say? What piece of advice? And then I can let you go back to me. What piece of advice would you give? I'm good. Someone listening to you right now. You're a broker of three states. They want to go. You know, they want to get rid of state. They want to go house or whatever. What would you say now or future related? What would you? What's on your mind? What would you say? I would say seek out a real estate company that's technology that has a strong space with technology and will make it possible for you to be able to work from home and is moving to a technology, techno, technic, you know, because most, most top producers and agents, they have a home office anyway. So find an agency that's working in New York don't require for me to have a physical um, business in New York to do deals in New York. I can write my deal from my office in Pennsylvania in New York. So find an office in, in, you know, an agency that makes it possible for you that, you know, that, that has a grasp on technology enough that you can be able to work and still conduct business, you know, because it's all technology anyway. It's all, you know, cloud-based, all the forms on the cloud, you know, but not everyone is, is, has started going that way. And especially now and has a, a, a you know um is is adjusting to it there are a couple couple companies out there that that do that uh do it well um a couple of them exp a couple other agencies but find that if you're going to still in and you know find that niche so you can still continue to conduct your business with less overhead you know with right. overhead with less overhead and to be able to so for well, me you should always keep your overhead down yeah Oh, yeah, always right. That's always yeah, o always for that. But find a position so that you can still continue to function um, using technology. Um, I'd already considered, you know, put make you know using my home as a office, and all it requires is have a separate interest. You know, downsizing for Pennsylvania, I've already downsized from New Jersey. You know, I've already downsized to a smaller. Already, I would absolutely downsize. If you ask me, I would absolutely downsize. I would absolutely downsize to increase your cash flow. I would get cash heavy as fast as possible if I were you, and I would buy anybody who couldn't hang. That's what I would do. Mm. If I were you, I would, if, if I were you, I would set this season right now to become the biggest broker in your state. And by big, I don't mean build it. See, mm -hmm. this is okay. so I'm, Grace. Put a few things in chat for me so I don't forget them. Bring up, just put. I, I'll know what that means. Black church, put that up. Put working capital versus cash flow. Put eighteen months. So you can stop right there. Now, Maurice, I would, oh, no, no, Grace, put the top three places I would invest. And that, that top three places I would invest, that's actually advice for me. And I always tell you when something's advice. Anything else, I'd be talking really objectively. Now, Maurice, back to you. I would absolutely mm -hmm. downsize. You ain't to, 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 at this time, if you did not prepare beforehand, like I did, and if you don't have 25% of all the money that you've made, stockpile, cash. Cash is still trash, but it's not trash right now. <laughs> cash is trash, but not right now. Cash is, <laughs> cash is fantastic. Right? Cash is very fantastic right now because you get to buy it to create cash flow. If you didn't do that, I would downsize so I can create cash flow and then use that cash flow to buy other people. I will absolutely do that. Essentially what I'm telling you is you need to acquire as many brokers and real estate agents as possible. And then you can do zoom trainings or something, do whatever you got to do. But I would grow from seven realtors to 700 during this time. Mm -hmm. I would, that's what I would do. Absolutely. And, and when you say buy, buy, buy other realtors, you mean doing whatever it takes to get them 
in the door. Where they I were would buy them, them, period. B-U-Y. I would gotcha. act okay. like in, gotcha. inequality is big business. You understand? Gotcha. This is, listen, y'all. Y'all listen to me. I didn't. I ain't telling y'all inequality is big business so I can be on some soapbox complaining. I am telling you to do the same thing that they are doing to you. Mm-hmm. You need to get into the top 1%. And your distribution system needs to be increased. And there are going to be a lot of realtors grumpy and unhappy. And it's time for you Got to it. own them. Got you. Mm-hmm. And they need to be working for you. And you make them happy. You give them value. You do what no one else can. Because you're here at ATS and we do a lot of stuff that can't no one else can. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. You should be, I want you to switch your mindset for me to... My 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 lion in me wants to say put people out of business, but I'll switch that into the positive. You need to save as many lives as possible. And how you do that is some employees and customers that other companies don't deserve. They're not going to treat them like you are. You need to go mm-hmm. get those. Feel me? Receive that. Can copy cool. that. Yep. Cool. And okay, I think Phil's gonna. Okay, good, good, good job. Just for calling you. Go ahead. This is a question that we brought up last night on the call, and it good made job. me start thinking about it based on the two summits that we attended the last uh, month, last month and a half. Mm-hmm. We had three CEOs and thought leaders say that when this thing, as we move through this thing, they are definitely going to get rid of their commercial offices. Mm-hmm. Right? Remember that. So what's the play on that? Yes, is the play, the play, create a a REIT where you can get people that buy into a pool, and then that pool is ready to buy those properties when their pennies on the dollar. Uh, I mean, I don't, I just, I'm not smart enough to know what the yeah. play is there. Is it on the buy side? Is it on the sell side? You know, where's the opportunity that we know for sure there's going to be a less demand for office space as we go through this thing. So where's yeah. the play? Yeah, the, the, the play is to buy those, right? Now, you get to buy those for pennies on the dollars. Typically, so this question is split into two. If you were ready, let me take it out of if everyone, this is what you should have done. And if you're not doing it, I want you to start doing it today for 2030. Please don't shoot. another. <laughs> now, what I want you is to start saving 25% of your income and use it for economic corrections. You're going to do that by buying things a lot cheaper than what they should be. So this is where your morality gets out the picture because it's perfectly fine for you to be a good person using capitalistic practices and then helping other people. All right. Mm -hmm. That's the first part of that. So if you were ready, you're already ready for this. Now, if you're not, what you have to do now is turn cash into cash flow. That's what you have to do. The answer is the same. If you are ready, you're going to use your cash collected as cash flow. If not, then you need to now generate cash and make it cash flow. The answer is the same. One is collected, one is generated. You were either already collecting your cash, Adonia, and now you're moving it to cash flow. Adonia collected cash. She was ready. Now she doesn't have to generate cash. She's going to put it in a vehicle that generates it for her or a couple of vehicles. Get it? She's one of the lucky ones. If you're not coordinated necklace Adonia. Not and what you do part. Okay. <laughs> got you. <laughs> and what you do is now you gotta so the play is I have to use cash to create cash flow. Phil recognizes the seizures an opportunity. It's gonna be plenty of office space. That is going to happen. Typically you would buy office space on square foot itch. That's how it will work. You would pay a good deal would be anywhere between thirteen cents 
of 25 cents per square foot or dollars, right? Right. It's something like that. Just, just because oh, that's excellent. Be, if, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're in Miami, twenty five dollars mm-hmm. per square foot is, you know, if it depends on where you're at, right? You know, so I'm right. just trying to give you a little range here. Now, so this is the play. You don't want to buy the office spaces in the traditional sense of thinking if it was already. Let me just use fifteen dollars a square foot. Let's just use that for a simple math. You want to be trying to buy it for six dollars a square foot. If regular price was already fifteen dollars a square foot, then you want to buy it six dollars a square foot, three dollars a square foot, a dollar for square foot that would even work. Mm-hmm. And there will be people taking fifteen dollar losses if. Chase Bank is ready to take a 700% loss. Do not think for sale by owner won't take a 1,500% loss. Thanks. Hmm. For sale by owner doesn't have a central bank. So the play is, it's time for all of you who want to do this to become the mall strip owners or that mm-hmm. the gas station strip owners. And then you repurpose these offices. These offices then get repurposed into gas stations, Whataburgers, McDonald's. You understand? Know the play is simple. Write this down so people can get it, Grace, because I said a lot. If you were ready, take your collected cash, buy pennies on a dollar, create cash flow. That, that's the steps. Take your collected cash, buy pennies on the dollars, create cash flow. The same, and just copy and paste that, and then you're going to write just a different word for if you were not ready. If you were not ready, you're going to generate cash. So you're going to take out collected. And you're gonna not gonna take your collected, you're going to generate cash by pennies on a dollar to create cash flow. The important part of this sentence is create cash flow. That means you're looking to rent it out to someone, you're not looking to sell. Now you can if you sell, then that's just you creating cash again. That's not cash flow. Do not confuse a sale. Massive income is not cash flow. A $200,000 check is not cash flow. $200,000 check a month, that's cash flow. The reason why a $200,000 check doesn't save you is because in the economic downturn, that $200,000 check disappears. Do you know how many people that I know who are top of the line speakers from Brad Blazer to Billy Dorsey that just lost $500,000 in 21 days for speaking engagements? Billy Dorsey had to go speak for Porsche. Brad had to go to California for automotive industry. Them checks is gone. They weren't smart enough like the human consultants who got 50% up front. Right? <laughs> Them checks is gone. You understand? Gone. Don't think massive income is cash flow. Hey, go ahead, Phil. And if you happen to adjust your fee, you get all of it up front. Oh, I didn't even think about that. There you go. It's not something I even thought about. Think about that. Cash flow is king. So you're going to generate or create or collect. Now, watch this. The important thing there is cash flow. So you want to be renting out this office space. But if you can't, then you want to sell it. But when you sell it, it only goes into the second sentence, generate cash. It's, you get it? I don't want you 
I, I split these sentences up in three parts. If you're ready, if you're not ready, part number one. Take collected cash, generate cash, part number two. And then create cash flow, part number three in both of them. If you sell, that's create cash flow. That's it. That's it. It's just, that's it. It's not, excuse me, if you sell, it's just generate cash. It's not cash flow. It's not cash flow. Remember, I'm the guy that saw this coming and took the greatest thing I ever invented and made it monthly subscriptions. That's foresight. Right? That's cash flow. So I want you to think about that. So that's the play. The play is you buy it and then you rent it, but you win in two different ways. You either resell it to someone else, like a wholesaler, like real estate, right? You resell it to someone else, or you let someone come in and totally change the way it is. Just because it was a restaurant doesn't mean you need to stay that way. Because cash flow is the goal. And if someone goes in there with a poodle, you know, grooming service, and they're the only one in town, and, and they, they serve the elite, and that poodle grooming service is raking in the dough, you better change that restaurant to a poodle grooming service. <laughs> Keep that, that sink in there and not as a tub for the poodles. Or something you know what I'm saying? Anything like that? That's the play there. Let me back up real quick. Question for Maurice: Do you think owner finance at an eighty twenty subprime would make extreme takeover? Make a extreme takeover. That's for you, Maurice. Do you think so I, mm-hmm. owner finance and eighty twenty subprime would make an extreme takeover? Owner finance indefinitely, um, especially if 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 the bank, all the bank, the other banks follow suit. Which I'm sure, which seem like they, which they they would, whether it's going to be, you know, overtly or covertly, they're gonna it, it will be done. Um, owner financing, I'm not sure about the 8020. Just in my opinion, I don't believe the interest rates are aggressive enough for the 8020s to make sense dollars wise. You know, though they made sense if you know this with, with the majority of those 8020 loans, the interest rates were higher. There was enough skin in the game for someone to be able to lend on it. And be if if the default, you know, if you defaulted, they still was able to make the 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 lender was still able to make money off of it. So the rates are a little too low, in my opinion, for that to make sense. The eighty twenty um, to make sense and to still be able to because you don't even see them. You know, you're not seeing them. You're not seeing them much now, um, unless you know. I I I haven't seen them. You know, I don't see them. However, on the financing, I definitely think that will be something that's going to take a, um, is because how else are you going to get into these properties? If you can't, you know, for, if you, do, if you don't have the down payment, you don't have the down payment, the money house, you're going to get into them if you have to come up with other creative right. financing, creative ways to do it. That will, that will be what I would ask. On the finances, on the finance for the takeoff greatly. Absolutely. But it, yep. it, it did in 2008. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the, the banks are dending or deeming lenders, um, customers unlendable. When the bank yep. says that the general population is unlendable, that is 100%. 100% of the time, the beginning of a recession. 100%. 100%. That's one of the key factors in a recession. The bank must say the general population is unlendable. That's what does it. That's the second part of the, the, the a recession. A government's economy goes on spending. Spending drives the government's economy. Now that the consumers are spending, then that's part of the economy. But then where are they getting the money from? They, they, since it's illegal to go make the money, you got to get the money from the banks. When the banks say we're not giving out no more money because y'all keep pulling it out and, y- and y'all losing it. When the banks start taking 700% cash reduction, that's the beginning of a recession. And people like me, people like Justin, people like Maurice will be like, hey, I'll loan to you. 
almost every loan on the to anybody who was getting ready to buy a house here recently, they fit to get approved. If they ain't been approved last week or last week, they're fit to get approved because these is last loans. <laughs> these is I yep. want eight <laughs> percent. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hurry up, approve them, get them out of here, get them out of mm-hmm. here, right? Get, get them out of here, get them out of here. We'll collect if we need to, right? Get them out of here. It's, it's true. Apartment complex is gonna do the same thing. Apartment complex is gonna do the same thing. They got everything for sale about anything to where I get to carry the loan. That's good look. Very good look. Let me address in order what Grace wrote down. Look at that. Boy, I tell you. ESPN just sent me a notification. I'll be I'll be fast with the ESPN. Monday night raw takeaways. See if y'all can see this here. WWE is essential. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, see, if you want it first, come to ATS. If you want it first, come to ATS. Crazy. Crazy. I remember just these things. Black church. I learned a lesson from black church. This is why I know the black church taught me a lot of things about business that I hold today that I'm blessed to do it. Where's Liddell? Liddell. Well, if I tell y'all. Yes, sir. Okay. I want you to hear what I'm about to say, man. The black church taught me that the reason why we suffer for generations is because our buildings are too big and that house, that building note is too big. Yes, sir. Who else can agree that you currently go to a black church with an edifice, that's a word we like to say, is grandioso. And every time you need something, you can't get it because payroll got to be due. Help me, somebody. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about my people, our struggle. Cause we like the big stuff, right? We do all the you know all the stuff. This is why I don't do this. This is exactly why I learned this. <laughs> Somebody messaged me said our bills actually paid off. Congratulations! Them taxes ain't gonna never be paid off though. As right? so long as you can hand them taxes, you'll be just fine. But I want you to think about it. This is the office space argument that Phil brought up. I learned to condense office space. Even in one of the offices right now has four air conditions in it. If I, Maurice, if I just cut the light on, Reliant Energy is going to charge me a distribution fee. This is how it works. The way commercial, at least in Texas, you got your bill because energy is deregulated in Texas. And then you got the polls, the polls fee or distribution fee. That's who owns the polls. So the light company could be ATS, but Reliant, not Reliant, CenterPoint owns the polls. In 15 minutes, CenterPoint, every 15 minutes, CenterPoint is checking how much distribution I'm using. If you don't know this, I am blessing you right now. If you have a commercial building, they're checking how much dis- how much distribution I'm using, and they're going to charge me by the maximum amount of distribution, even if I only use it for a fraction of a second. Why? It's fair because they have to always their grid must always be ready to charge me the max thing I use, even if I don't use it the whole thirty days. I put a weight on the grid and they have to be ready to serve it to me since they have to be ready, then I am responsible for paying for their have to be readiness. That's how it works. In the first 15 minutes when you walk into the office, if you hit the light switch, the AC, and all the other lights, and cut on the lights in the office, you're telling 
whoever owns your lights and poles, that we skyrocketed, and watch my hands go past the screen, this much. So what's going to happen is you're going to get a distribution fee for that much, even though you use this much energy. Just look at your bill. If you're in a deregulated energy sector of, of America, look at your bill. You got two bills in one. You got the service bill, and it'll say something like 11.3 kilowatts an hour, 9.6, something like that. And then it'll say other services, fees and other services. And it's going to have a distribution fee on there. And it's going to be $224 or something like that. And that is that distribution fee I'm talking about. When you own half of the church I come from problem is they didn't understand this. So the light bill was always higher than what it should have been because what would the deacon do to get ready for service? Cut on all the lights and cool the building down. Faithfully, he show up at four in the morning. So when the church get there at six, the building's cool. Grace, am I not am I not speaking the 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 the, the church life you got over there? That ain't how it works. Yes. That's how it ain't works. your daddy a deacon? Yep. And don't he do that? Yep. All right. There you go. All right. Now that taught me something in business. It taught me well. If that's how it works, what else should I do? It taught me two things. It taught me if I don't have the big old building then I could invest it in big old infrastructure that creates cash flow. So instead of high building cost or high building high building cost, I reroute that to high infrastructure cost that I pay one time instead of over the long time of a 30 year mortgage. Does that make sense to you? Some of you should probably do that. The second thing I had Grace right now is there is a huge difference between working capital and cash flow. Working capital just means that Denise Hill needs to take in my 10,000 order of T-shirts that she makes. Now, she's, when I order 10,000, she's going to want me to pay up front. Why? Because she's going to use that money to then buy the materials. But that's not how it works when you get orders that big. It's called a net 30. You understand this is called a net 30. You typically pay after you get the services. If you don't have enough working capital, Denise can't give me $10,000. I mean, she can't give me my $10,000 order shirt. $8 a shirt, she needs $80,000 in working capital. So now Denise is smart and she has $80,000 cash floating around her business. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not cash flow. That's working capital. Because where is that working capital coming from? Customers. And you do not want an economic downturn to take your working capital only to find out your business truly doesn't generate cash flow. You understand? That's what's happening to all these billionaires and all these companies right now. The reason we got so many layoffs is because the working capital has disappeared and now there's not enough cash flow to keep people employed. That That's probably the smartest thing I've said in 2020. In the spirit of sharing my screen, I said this in the meeting. I said now this is going to come back up Friday for sure. Get ready for it. This is come back up Friday. Get out of here, Ed. There you go. The head of the Federal Reserve Bank, where Chase is holding their money, at least America Central Bank or North America Central Bank, says. America, number one economy in the world, should prepare, brace itself for 18 months of shutdowns. 18 months. 18 
months. 18 months. All of you need to take your business so seriously that you don't have a six-month reserve. You have a 24-month plan to be disrupted. Because even if you aren't, even if you're not disrupted, your customers will be for the next 18 months. Am I making this clear? It's a two-fold thing, Maurice. Okay, you're doing well, ATS, but are your customers going to be doing well? And we as ATS can guarantee our customers will not be. So what we have to do is steadily adjust for the next 24 months. You understand? Okay, I'm gonna get a donor to say the last words for the class. Last words, yes, last words. Get her to say last words. Now, the next thing I told Grace to write down is top three places I would invest. And actually, you know what? That actually worked out just fine. Cause this, now here we go. I said it before. I'll say it again. I only trust three things, Pam Norris, during this time. And man, one of them is stocks. And man, one of them is people. Okay? I trust real estate. Why? Because it's a hard asset. It's like minerals, gold, you know. Water, I can see it, I can touch it. Hard assets. I trust sales funnels. Why? Because it's a smaller version of real estate. <laughs> For $99 a month, I could buy my financial freedom. And I don't need my own product to sell real to sell sales funnels. Hell, I could take sales funnels and if y'all know how to build sales funnels, I promise you you can strike a deal with Maurice to sell more houses for him and you can get paid. As long as you can sell, you will not be out of a job. That's the truth. The only people not being laid off during this time are salespeople. Truth. Now, there's a third place. Not people, but business. And now, the good thing about business, y'all, now you get to see who really had a good business. Because everybody's exposed. You hear me? I mean, in the class, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to have, have I don't just say something, we out of here. Listen to me. Everybody is exposed. All that, put them on some cologne. Oh, I could smell if you took a shower or not. Not smell. My grandmother said, let me rub the ankle. That dirt fall off my ankles. That's what's happening to everybody's business right now. I can tell if you had a real church, real real estate, everybody's suffering. And some companies are doing better than ever. ATS being one of them. Okay? Now, you don't invest in the people. It's that business system. Do you understand? Yeah, would you like to know what I really do? I haven't said out loud to anyone. What we really do here is I've created the first, the world's first. I took coaching and I took college and I put them the two together. Everybody sees that. Everybody sees that, but that ain't what I did. I, if, you're, if you're not familiar, I'm going to give you the term that I've done. It's called open source learning. That's what I did. I made open source learning university. This is the secret. I never tell nobody. I'm giving it to you right now. And I want to set it down here for alley oop. This is the secret. Open source learning simply means this here. The professors and the students share in the learning experience and create that learning experience every time they come together. Imagine going to Texas A&M 
and telling the professor, we want learning to be this way today. That is exactly what happens in ATS every single day. Imagine going to Harvard and the students run how the education work at Harvard and not the provost. Imagine paying Tony Robbins for coaching, Les Brown for coaching, and the coachee determines how the coach coaches that day. That's what I did. That's the genius behind what I did. I know, I know. It's such a it's such a crazy concept that it's so hard to grasp. That's what I did. That's why we have no competition. That's why we have no competition. Because the students, y'all, and the government, which is a student, determine the learning experience each time y'all show up. Each time. So now I could put any coach out of business. You want to be a coach? I can put you out of business. Your hand. I want to be a life coach. Good for you. You're out of business, though, if you stand next to me. Why? Because I can do what you do faster, better, and at a monthly price that's 99% lower than your coaching fee. And I can do it centered around your pajamas. Yep. You want a business degree? I got you. 16-week semester? Child, you can do that in two classes. I'll ruin your 16-week semester in two classes in your pajamas. And I tell you, oh, yeah, you can steal from me right now, and it's completely relevant for today. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not going to be outdated. And if it does, don't worry about it. I got a class for that outdated information. That's the genius about what we did here. That's the, actual, that's the actual genius by what we did here. I, you're right, Pam. I created a whole new niche completely. It's never been done before. It took a long time to do it. That is why we're doing better than ever. Because I did it off of a session model. And while everyone is adjusting to this system, we've been here. Hell. I could have any one of y'all go out there and teach these guys out there how to do Zoom right now because you don't Zoom so much. <laughs> Every last one of y'all Zoom experts at this point. Here's the setup. Real estate. Cell phones, Antonio. Nope. I didn't do all that talking for Les Brown, Antonio, John Maxwell, Tony Robbins. I didn't know what I did. I told you what the system actually is. Those are the only three things that I would invest in. I would invest in nothing else. And the good thing about this, y'all, is you don't have to wonder if someone's doing good in business no more. You don't even have to see the back office. Everybody's exposed now. Everybody lying, dead, bleeding. <laughs> Everybody, you ain't got to look. Just look. Just look out there and say, oh, 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 they dead. They dead. All these people that are all that concerned. How many times y'all, who's seen all them people two months ago posting about join my webinar, my consultant? That ain't happening right now. All them people in them small groups, that you met, I know a few of them. You can't, they can't even meet no more. They can't even meet in that hotel room they was meeting at. True. Now, Adonia, I want you to give us a word of advice. Adonia got ready November 2019. Sure did. Adonia said, you know what? You said something that made sense. Blah, 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 blah. And now, everybody dying around her butt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and California is under fire, literally. It's just crazy out there. It's just crazy. And don't you, you're one of the few people on planet Earth that got ready 
for this economic disruption, and you did it quickly. But you did it long term and quickly. You had to, it took you a while because you had to do some stuff you had to earn. But then you said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna listen to that little fool, and I'm gonna do this here with the Eric itself. All right, I'm gonna do this here, and then boom. Would you give us some advice in this season? Because you invested in either real estate, sales funnels, or business systems, and you got a collection of cash to benefit from either one of those. Doesn't matter which one, the IRS don't need to know none of your business. All right? What could you tell us? You just regular old Adonia with the matching accessories always. Can you give us some advice or a testimony of how good it feels not to be drowning with everybody else? I'm listening. I'm quiet. You something else. That's all I got. You something else. Um, you do give good information. I, I, I'm that person that don't believe what I hear the first time. I have to do a little homework and I have to convince myself. But one of the things you taught me, which I, it still sticks in my head, because I wanted to know what do you do with money? How do you, you know, because I, you know, should I invest so and so forth? And you told me money is like soldiers and you need as many soldiers out there working for you and making money. And I realized through your craziness that I have a lot of equity in my home and money was sitting in my home and I had an old school mindset. That old school mindset was, oh no, let's get get the mortgage all paid off, own your house, oh look at blah blah blah. Here's what's unfortunate about that. I have a real estate license, so you think I know better. But no, I'm still being conservative. And I thought about I have a lot of money sitting there. That money is not working, it's just sitting there. I made the decision, thought it was crazy at first, and now I'm like, I was crazy to be sitting on it. I made the decision to pull some of that money out of my home so I have cash so I can go make that soldiers go to work. And I'm in the process of making those soldiers go to work. So it was one of the best, again, most of us are looking for, get that mortgage paid off, get that, get that zero balance, get I own my house, I own my house. We ain't never gonna own anything completely because somebody's attached to it the, the the taxes are still attached to it the the government's got some their hands on a little bit of it you got your your water you still got expenses involved so take care of those expenses so i i was wise enough to make the decision even though my buddy does tend to come off a little arrogant um i respect <laughs> the source of the information and I trust the source. It was the best thing that I could have done. The timing could not have been better because as he just proved, it's gonna be much more difficult to get a loan at this particular time. So I have my cash. It's sitting saying, what are you gonna do with me? I've made an investment, won't we'll get into specific details, um, that you're aware of and I know it's the right thing. I'm not even questioning it. I know it's the right thing because I made the decision to do so. Here's what's interesting. You just taught me something today. Open source learning. I heard you, but I'm not just listening to you. I just Googled it. I wanted to know, okay, let me let me see what he's really talking about. Sounds what it's great. Sounds what it's great. I, I love it. It says it open source learning embraces the idea that everyone learns different things in different ways. And it values diverse approaches to reaching those goals. The open source learning empowers teachers and students to transform their ideas and interests into a powerful learning experience that they share with everyone. So I know a little bit more than maybe some people know about this platform that's, that's being, that you have your hands on. It totally makes sense now. Everything you're doing, just light bulb moment for me, just having you say what you just said, because there's, there's enough of information for every single person, no matter what level you're at, no matter what your thought process are, there's something for everyone. And my arrogant friend, you did the dang thing. And I know I made the right decision. And I thank you for allowing me to be able to have made that decision. 
Very welcome. Very welcome. Yes. So now it all makes sense. I, I, I said slick stuff I'll be holding on to. And you can find my open source. This TED Talks from 13 years ago. Uh, you can just put in YouTube, open source learning. There's two guys that did TED Talks. One of them's 13 years ago. I'm telling you, I figured out how to disrupt the education industry. I'm telling you now because you can't stop it. It's impossible to stop it. It's just, it, it can't happen. I have way too many years ahead on you. It's on them. I am literally Netflix, and I'm looking at Blockbuster. They had a chance to work with me. Actually, I was actually trying to work with them. They didn't want to do it, so now they got to be my customer. Because this is what it is. That's it, y'all. Inequality is big business. Just took you on a nice path. I'm going to actually run this video. I ain't even say that. I won't. This this is too important. The world needs to see this. Listen. Adonia is one of the lucky ones because she prepared herself. And here's the crazy thing. She got a 900 credit score right now. It's crazy. It's like 950, 100. And I bet you if she tried it today, they would still find a reason to deny her. They would say something. They would say, well, you know what, your debt-to-income ratio, or they would say, they would make up, Maurice, I'm lying. They would literally you lying. hit you. No, they sir, would, not lying. They would hit her with something, some techni- something technical that, ugh. Why? Because they need to hold, they, they're, not, they're not hedging their bets. She's unlendable. Not her. The the people. Go ahead, Adonia. Oh, okay. But, it's, but especially here in um, here in California, because we all know. And again, I do have a real estate license. I try to downplay that, but I've real, I've been licensed for quite some time, so I understand that the market process. Um, one of the things you guys did mention, by the way, Mr. Maurice, and uh, a state of income. Man, back in the day when they just like, oh, we just put whatever whatever number you want on there, and you get your money. That's how easy money was to get. But in California, I know right now, I know for sure our housing prices are going to go down. They're going to go down. So I got the top of my equity, the top of my my value of my home. I promise you if I did this and I had an appraiser come out within the next 30 days, I will promise you that number is not going to be the same because the market is going to be with COVID, nobody either. knows what's going to happen. The economy is, is, is not in the best of conditions. And it's probably going to get a little worse before before we start even seeing any yeah. kind of improvement. So it's going and to be they hard. would not maximize your money so you can go take it out the bank. There's no way they Abs- would do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So timing is everything. And I, again, I appreciate the, the knowledge, but definitely the market, you're going to start. And, and actually, I'm glad I have the money because now I can go buy these houses that are not going to have the same value. You get them at a lower value, you hold on to them until they're, you know, higher, and you do you sell them or whatever. So it the timing was was great, and um, again, I I commend you for your knowledge of, and what you train and teach us. Boom! There you go. Appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. Good good testimony from the coordinated sister of hers. Yeah, I'll go out there and Amen. go. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, man. Go go. I don't want to hold up because I'm nervous about this. No, okay. I, oh, okay. <laughs> but um, I, what I've, what what I've, what Adonia said was 100 percent accurate, man. And I've been, I've just this past, about the past couple of weeks, where I've been a lot real quiet. I've been studying the word believe. I've been questioning myself on what do I believe. That's where my hit those walls have been based on what I believe. So. What has what has been happening in the last few classes that have been that you've been teaching? They've been showing me my mistakes, and that's like you said earlier. Those are the parts that people don't want to see. But in order to to get past it, we gotta know where we went wrong. Uh, where we not wrong because I know we don't like to use the word wrong, but where I could have did something better. And so that's been helping me just listening to this. Um, when my dad passed um, in 2016. He left his house to me and his house had a note on it. It had, I think I told you this a while back. It had a note on it. I was panicking. Everybody around me, my family, we got to sell it. Just, uh, you know, nobody can pay this mortgage and 
the bank had some pressure on me and in my heart i knew to hold it get the equity and turn the equity into something but i let the outside influence me to to do the sale thing quick boom boom get it done get it over get it over and so what i'm what i'm sharing with the group now is what i'm going through i'm learning to detach myself emotionally from the mistakes i made wow that's what's happening with me that's the process i'm going through right now because as i hear wow. Adonia, I'm over here screaming for her, like, get it, girl, go, go, go. And then at the same time, I'm looking at what the opportunity I didn't see because I wasn't aware of this that I'm in right now. So what ends up happening, I, I had to check, okay, Liddell, what do you really believe? What do you believe? It's not going to move based on, you can't keep moving based on new information. You got to anchor in on what you believe and then take in the new information. And what's been happening to me through the ATS, probably this past two to three weeks of classes, I've been evaluating my mistakes, evaluating my mishaps. And now I'm moving into the realm of detaching my emotions from those mistakes. Because that's what kept hitting me. Man, if I should have, man, if I would have, I should have, I should have. And then I got to detach myself from those mistakes in order to take in this great information that's coming now. That's what's happening with me. I know I've been quiet for a while, y'all. That's what's been going on. Man, that's good stuff. I'm glad you I'm glad you did that. Michelle G. Um Confess I with thy heart. I had a quick question though, actually. Um what we were talking about yesterday about the CARE Act. Would right, some right. I actually saw that in chat too, and I forgot to address it. Good. I'm glad you brought it back up. Oh, you muted you muted yourself. And Maurice, I, this is gonna be something you gotta answer. I was just gonna add, um, because it he helped me when he told me about it, you know. Um, because I didn't think that my business would qualify for it or would actually um be one that would, but I was bringing it up because if you know other people's businesses may qualify as well you want to talk about the care act maurice to okay. make sure you gave yeah. her so the cares act is um is directed towards um businesses and those small businesses um one portion of it is there's is two or three um products that they have and that it that it is um and it's the sba small business administration um there's loans and then there's a grant so the first uh uh round of money came out i believe it was last friday and the grants so the applications went and i believe tuesday yet today today's tuesday yeah so so the applications open up today um as a matter of fact for the app the loan process so there's a couple of different process types of loans you can get there's two types of loans and there's a grant and one of the loans a portion of it is forgivable um depending on like you said it goes ties to right what you're saying because the system needs to work it works if you're paying into the system so you're awarded you're rewarded if you pay into the system right so the uh the one of the loans you can um 75 percent of it can be forgiven if it's if it goes to um not cash flow but um working capital so paying your rent all those things that keep you you know keep paying into things so um and that's one of the loans so the, the cares act the first the first one was a ten thousand dollar grant for and it was also extended to independent contractors real estate agents and you know um and then it, again it depends on the state you're in where it applies and so you want to research the cares act for your state what your government your your governor did and how it applies locally to you because real estate local that those those particular things are local to you it is a federal um however there is some local restrictions so you can go and get now that ten thousand dollar grant <laughs> It opened up Friday, last Friday at nine o'clock at 10.30, it was depleted. Another thing, so there was, so they're going, so there's another round of funds that they're applying for. 
Now, to uh, to another point to what you mentioned, that the big banks, they're there's there's they're applying for the larger amounts, and there's another process that they have to go through, and you know, so so there's there's some things that um to look into it and really to study it. And um, I'm going to find myself doing that, researching it. But look into the CARES Act for your local area for you and what, depending on what type of business you have, if you're an independent contractor. Um, the second one, which is the loan, though, does require a little bit more. It requires your uh, two years of tax returns. It's going to require a little bit more. It's all the requirements that you would typically acquire need for an SBA loan. That would be um, the second one. So the CARES Act covers that. Um, the, the grant was a one-page grant. It's not a whole lot that you had to do to do it. You could have been in business and it was, not, it was minimum that was being asked of you to get the $10,000 grant. However, um, I would still resubmit the application even if there's no funds because there is an additional round of money that's be, that, that is being um, applied for. And some people are getting the grant, some people have gotten them. And um, so uh, don't not fill out the application. Um, look into it. Don't not fill it out. Um, I don't know about the loan part, part, but you know that's a you know business decision on on your end. It, you know if as long as you can find a way for it to make more money for you, if it's going to generate more capital, make more of those soldiers for you, then it may not be a bad move as long as you know. And they're amortized on ten years, and some of them are amortized on a thirty-year amortization. So just look into them to distinguish which is which, but they're available, they're made available to small businesses, small business owners. Um, one of them is um, done on a 10 year, and that's what most SBA loans are done. Um, one of um, SBA.gov, Carol. So if you wanna to go to the SBA.gov or go to your town, your, 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 your state's uh, website, and they'll direct you, SBA.gov, yep and or it'll or go to your local township or your state level and they'll, they'll they're definitely going to point you to that website from that because it's a state it's going to be based on your state so if you're you're incorporated in your state it's tied to that so it'll be tied to wherever your incorporation is and it'll be tied to your corporation and the other things if you're a nonprofit, you stand to benefit probably the most as a nonprofit. you get the best out of it and benefit the most from those as nonprofits for the funds that are available. And again, it's, it's benefiting because best believe that it, the funds are being set up like that move you just clearly, um, you know, the WW, that example you showed, the money's there for, you know, um, you know, um, it's gonna be set, allocated, you know, so you just have to um, put yourself in position to, um, to, to, to get it and make it work for you, you know, if you can make it work for you to, to, to uh, make your business grow and make cash flow, turn it into cash flow for you, that's the best opportunity to make it so that it is generating some income and maybe get some doors, buy properties, because that's what the big banks did. When they got bailed out, the bigger banks bought the smaller banks and then, then applied the rules that Chase just applied and then didn't lend any didn't didn't even mm. make any more loans to individuals. It was crazy. Every time, so they man. The banks, man, and it didn't. So it wasn't even, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But I think we're gonna have to get you to teach a whole class on this cares acting. I think that'll be extremely valuable for us Good. moving yeah, forward. Do some research. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yep. yeah. Do some research because you you blessed her on that call yesterday. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you again, Antonio T. Smith Jr. You can't plan better. You can dominate. All right, everybody, we'll see you later on to embarrass Liddell for tonight in his speech. All right, everybody. Congratulations, Adonio. <laughs>